Good morning. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Welcome to London Dairy Presbyterian Church online Sunday service. It is such a blessing to be back home with you to worship the Lord our God together. I miss you so much. Tomorrow I will know if I passed or not. I'll let you know. If it wasn't easy, but I gave you my all. Meanwhile, I would like to thank Minister Olga Times for her beautiful sermons. I participated with you. I watched all of them with you. So thank you, Olga. If you're listening, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. If there is no rain, this isn't the announcements, there is no rain, there will be Bible studies at 1 p.m. in our parking lot followed by a weekly 2 p.m. social gathering. You will need a mask, a chair, and now you need a jacket because it is chilly out there now. During these three weeks that I've been out of town, I hope you have continued to be faithful with your tithings and offerings. LPC needs your support to keep on going. Those of you who live far away and would like to help us, you can contribute via PayPal. Just log into our webpage, lpcnh.net, and click on Contributions via PayPal on the first page, right in the front of the church. PayPal charges a small fee, but it makes the donating much easier. Thank you all for the efforts to keep our 300-year-old church alive during these pandemic times. Now let us thank and dedicate our offerings to God. Almighty God, thankful. We are thankful for what you have given us. We pray, Lord, that our offerings would be used to your glory and to help all of those in need. We, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us worship the Lord our God now. Please listen to the Word of God in John 9, to 1 to 41. Gospel of John, chapter 9, verses 1 to 41. Jesus heals a man born blind. Starting with verse 1. As he went along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Neither this man nor his parents sinned, said Jesus. But this happened so that, he, that the works of God might be displayed on him. As long as it is day, we must do the works of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. After saying this, he spit on the ground, made some mud with the saliva, and put it on the man's eyes. Go, he told him, wash in the pool of Siloam. And word, this word means sent. So the man went and washed and came home seeing. His neighbors and those who had formerly seen him begging asked, Isn't this the same man who used to sit and beg? Some claimed that he was. Others said, No, he only looks like him. But he himself insisted, I am the man. How then were your eyes open, they asked. He replied, the man they called Jesus made some mud and put, in, put it on my eyes. He told me to go to Siloam and wash. So I went and washed and then I could see. Where, this, where is this man, they asked him. I don't know, he said. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had been blind. Now the day on which Jesus had made the mud and opened the man's eyes was a Sabbath. 
Therefore, the Pharisees also asked him how he had received his sight. He put mud on my eyes, the man replied, and I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, for he does not keep the Sabbath. But others asked, How can a sinner perform such signs? So they were divided. Then they turned again to the blind man. What have you to say about him? It was your eyes he opened. The man replied, He is a prophet. They still did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they sent for the man's parents. Is this your son? They asked, Is this the one you say was born blind? How is that now he can see? We know he is our son, the parents answered, and we know he was born blind. But how he can see now, or who opened his eyes, we don't know. Ask him. He is of age. He will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders who already had decided that anyone who acknowledged that Jesus was the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. That was why the, his parents said, He is of age, ask him. A second time they summoned the man who had been blind. Give the glory to God and by telling the truth, they said. We know this man is a sinner. He replied, Whether he's a sinner or not, I don't know. One thing I do know, I was blind, but now I see. Then they asked him, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered, I have told you already, and you did not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciples too? Then they hurled insults at him and said, You are this fellow's disciple. We are disciples of Moses. We know that God spoke to Moses, but as for this fellow, we don't even know where he comes from. The man answered, Now that is remarkable. You don't know where he comes from, yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners. He listens to the godly person who does his will. Nobody has ever heard of opening the eyes of a man born blind. If this man were not from God, he could, not, he could do nothing. To this they replied, You were steeped in sin at birth. How dare you lecture us? And they threw him out. Jesus heard that they had thrown him out, and when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? Who is he, sir? the man asked. Tell me so that I may believe in him. Jesus said, You have now seen him. In fact, he is the one speaking with you. Then the man said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. Jesus said, For judgment I have come into this world, so that the blind will see, and those who see will become blind. Some Pharisees who were with him heard him say this, and asked, What? Are we blind too? Jesus said, If you were blind, you would not be guilty of sin. But now that you claim you can see, your guilt remains. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Amazing Father, we come before you today in prayer, asking you to open the eyes of our hearts so we can see you clearly and so we can also see where in our lives 
our vision might have been impaired. In the name of Jesus, our Savior, and I open, we pray. Our opener, we pray. Amen. I would like to share with you the text that I had the pleasure to work these past weeks for my ordination exam. John 9, 1-41. I had to perform the exegesis of this text, which is eye-opening. It's an eye-opening story for us in today's world, especially during the trials of this year of 2020. We have just read about the miracle that Jesus performed on the Sabbath, healing the blindness of a man that had been born blind. Some Pharisees were definitely not happy with Jesus' signs of a prophet. And they said on verse 16, This man is not from God, for he does not keep the Sabbath. Well, some among the Pharisees disagreed with the others and questioned their colleagues. Well, also in verse 16, Well, how can a sinner perform such signs? Notice that this question had no answer in our text. This story has become a blessed message that the Lord made sure to insert in His Holy Word for us to, to have and to learn. I would like to reveal with you some intricate details of the blindness experienced by the, this story's main characters in order for us to have a better understanding of the story as a whole. The first character is the blind man. The man was blind from birth. What were his needs? His first need was obvious, for he needed and certainly wanted to be able to see, since he had, had never seen the light in his whole life. However, it is important to know, and we all have to know, that a blind person can see better than those of us who have a 2020 vision. And why is that? Because blind people can see with the heart first. Plus, their other senses become much stronger and well-developed too. So the blind man also needed to have his pride and his confidence restored. He used to sit and beg, according to verse 8. When I was on seminary, I would take the tea, and there was this old man who in Boston, that, in one of the stations, that always stood there. He was blind, and he stood there with his... Uh, with his um, alone, but holding this, I don't know how to call it. Well, anyway, he was always um, singing. But the thing is, he couldn't see, sing. He was a bad singer. But people always gave him something out of pity. Now, think about this. How would you feel if you, if you had to sit and beg because you had no hope of feeling useful, no hope of working to support your family and yourself. You will have no pride, no confidence, right? That's how our man in the story, the blind man, felt throughout his life. And ultimately, he needed to have his heart changed, opened, and his faith is restored by the Son of Man. Billy Graham cited someone who said, When faith is strong, I know that troubles become trifles. And it is true, because many people overcome one trouble after another and still rejoice. After all, in Jeremiah 31, 13, God says, I will turn their mourning in joy. The second character that we're going to review is the Pharisees. But the, the blind Pharisees, the ones that couldn't see, 
Jesus, couldn't tolerate the fact that Jesus had signs of a prophet, of the Messiah. So those Pharisees, what kind of blindness did they face? Let's see. They couldn't see past their ego, their arrogance of being the almighty man of God. They terrorized the people of God of that time, in, in, you know, of that time, to the point that they, if people supported Jesus, they would be subject to what in Greek is called aposynagogos, which means out of the synagogue or excommunication, separation from the synagogue, which for the people of God would mean separation from God. God, And, and they are the people of God. That would be the end for them. They are the people of God. The Pharisees also could not see Jesus as the Christ, as the Messiah. So even though the signs were there, they could see the sign, but these Pharisees couldn't see. They were blind. Even though they prayed the Shema prayer, which is love your, the Lord our God with all your might, with all your heart, with, they would stop right there and then totally neglect loving their neighbor, if their neighbor had any affliction, especially from birth, for that would be considered sinful. Now, the third character would be Jesus, the eye-opener. Jesus said, I have come into this world so the blind will see. And he did it. He did exactly what he said. He opened the eyes of the blind. Jesus also said that being blind is not a sin, nor caused by sin. But if you feel that you are better than others, then you are blind and your guilt remains. Verse 41. When I look back, when I look at a black and brown neighbor, a disabled one, <clears throat> a neighbor experiencing poverty or homelessness, and deep inside I think that I am better than that neighbor, even though I would not dare to say it out loud, I am blind, and my guilt remains, according to Jesus. Jesus is the eye-opener, and he can open our eyes, especially the eyes of our hearts, so we can see, believe, and worship him. All we need to do is recognize our need and ask him like the man did. I want to see the Son of Man. Well, he hadn't been blind for he had been blind for some time and, and he had seen Jesus after Jesus opened his eyes. But he had not seen Jesus as the Son of Man. But when he asked Jesus, Jesus opened his eyes, the eyes of his heart. And then when that happened, he was completely changed. A changed for better. The former, the, the fourth character is the same man, but no longer blind. He is the former blind man. And he's multifaceted, multifaceted, or faceted um, conversion. Uh, he says, I was blind and now I see. That's the first conversion. That alone must have been an amazing experience. He was changed also from a beggar to a bold spokesperson. Once his eyes were open, he gained courage and faced the mean Pharisees with boldness, asking them, why are you asking for him again? Do you want to follow him again? Do you want to become their, his disciples too? He also was changed or converted from spiritually blind to a believer and worshiper of the Son of Man. 
When he was thrown out of the synagogue, Jesus asked him, Do you believe the Son of Man? He asked Jesus to tell him, Who is the Son of Man? So he may believe in him. Jesus told him, You have now seen, seen him. In fact, he is the one speaking with you. And only then, the man, that man said, Lord, I believe, and worshipped him. Jesus had opened the eyes of his heart at that specific moment. Jesus is the eye opener. So our challenge for, for us today comes from the following question. Assuming that we ourselves experience some blindness too, how do you and I need the Lord to open the eyes of our hearts today, especially this year? Let's see. First, we need to see past our ego. This year, with COVID-19 and all the suffering everywhere, we often ignore the sickness, the loneliness, the grieving around us, and we spend a lot of time worrying mainly about our own selves and our own needs. Second, we need to be able to see Jesus as our Lord and Savior with our hearts in order to believe him as the Son of Man and boldly share with others the restoration that he provides and that we had experienced. Third, we need to see the poor, the homeless, the foreigner, the black and brown brothers and sisters, the elderly, and all the physically or mentally challenged neighbors as our equal, our equal, and love, we have to love them as we love ourselves. We need also to stop trying to find culprit for whatever suffering we or our, or our neighbor experience. We gotta stop the blaming. We need to stop asking why and trust he who said, I am the one you are looking for. We need to let go and let God. Can we do this? Can we repent from our sins? I mean, when I talk about sin, I mean our sin of being selfish or egocentric. Our sin of being arrogant by feeling better than our neighbor. Our sin of being judgmental instead of leaving this to Jesus who said, for judgment I have come into this world, on verse 39. Our sin of not helping our neighbor when we are perfectly capable of doing so, and so forth. These are sins of our blind hearts. So we need to ask Jesus to heal us and open the eyes of our hearts today. So let us pause for a minute and ask the Lord to heal our spiritual blindness right now. I ask you to bow your head and pray. I'm going to do two. I'm going to do the same thing here. And may the Lord Jesus open the eyes of your hearts today. Amen? Amen. Let us pray the prayers of the people and the Lord's Prayer. Loving God, open the eyes of our hearts so we can see the pain of our neighbor and cry with those who cry. Fill us more and more with your love so we can love like you, even those who whom we disagree with or we simply dislike. Help us be at peace with all those we encounter. And Lord, we ask you to take all these requests we have in our hearts into your healing, blessing, and caring hands through, us, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now, beloved, as you go forth into your week, keep singing this prayer in your heart. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord, for I want to see you. I want to see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. So pour out your power and love as I sing you, Lord. I sing holy, holy, holy. And brothers and sisters, may the op open eyes of your heart give you much boldness and much love and much peace. In the name of our eye opener, who is Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen. Go in peace. I love you. Miss you all. Your